Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we'll uh, discuss mutual inductance uh, from the chapter number 13, Magnetically Coupled Circuits, and we'll also uh, discuss example 13.1. So, let's see what is the mutual index, uh, inductance and uh, what are its effects. Uh, when a current I flows through a coil of N turns, so this current I is flowing through a coil of N turns, a magnetic flux phi is produced around it. So, magnetic flux lines are produced around it. But this has another effect. We know that when a varying magnetic field uh, lines cuts a coil, then voltage is induced according to Faraday's law. So voltage V will be induced and that voltage will be induced here. So this voltage V is induced because of the flux cutting the coil. Okay, now let's see another scenario. A second coil is brought near the first one. Well, like shown here, we have brought another coil and now we can, for convenience, we can say that some of the flux are only cutting this one. So we'll call uh, calling them 511. And then some of the flux are cutting only the second coil. So we are calling that as 512. Now as because of the 511, the voltage induced here will be V1, the self-induced self voltage. But the volt, there will be voltage induced in the second coil also. And this will be called mutual induced voltage because of the mutual inductance between these two. There is now a relation, mutual relation. So we will call that as mutual inductance. So the voltage V1, uh, we, we can write as LDT. We know that the voltage across an inductor is written by LDI DT. So it is L1 DI1 DT for V1 and similarly for the mutual voltage we can write V2M is M21 DIDT. Now M, you see the difference here we are using the inductance L but here we are using the mutual inductance between the two M21. So M21 is known as the mutual inductance of coil 2 due to the flux of coil 1. So mutual inductance of coil 2 due to flux of coil 1 is M21. Okay, now if we bring another current source or to bring the current source towards the right hand side, then a similar phenomena will happen. A voltage V2 will be induced and a mutual voltage V1M will be induced on the left hand side. So V2 we can write L2 Di2 D2 and also V2, V1M we can write M12 Di2 over DT where M12 in this case is the mutual inductance of coil 1. Now mutual inductance of coil 1 due to flux of coil 2. So due to flux of coil 2. Okay. And the subsequently we will see that actually these two fluxes are same M12 and M21 and that is why we just write M. Okay, so now the two scenarios are here. Source on the left hand side, self induced voltage and mutual voltage. Similarly, current on the right hand side, self induced voltage and mutual voltage. Now, how do we show these mutual voltage in circuit? For that, we'll draw the diamond shape voltage sources and on the because of the, this, we have a voltage induced on the secondary side, so we'll call it V2M as we were calling V2M here. So this is uh, on the secondary side. Similarly, on the primary side, the voltage uh, due to this current will be induced, so we uh, will we'll call it V1M on this side, this V1M. Okay, now the question is, what will be the polarity of these voltage sources? 
So let's see that. Next slide. Okay, we, we follow a convention known as dot convention and it simply says that if current enters the dotted terminal of one coil. Now look here, these are, this is the circuit, we have a dot here and we have a dot here and the current is entering the dotted terminal of one of the coil. Then what will happen? The reference voltage polarity of the mutual voltage in the second coil is positive at the dotted terminal. So what it actually means is that there will be a positive sign where there this dot is. Now the dot is on the upper part, so a positive voltage sign will be on the upper part of this diamond. And so we'll draw, write it like this, so volt positive at the upper part. So this, has, this is because of this current. Now let's see uh, for the other current. If the current enters the undotted terminal, now there is a current like here, the current is entering the undotted terminal, then the undotted terminal will be positive. So where is the undotted terminal? At the bottom. So the bottom of this will be positive. So the bottom of the V1M will be positive. So this is how we write. Now let's see there are two other also possible. One dot is here and the other dot is here. Current is entering the dotted terminal so dot will be positive. Now the dot is at the lower end so lower end will be positive. And similarly current entering the non-dotted terminal so non-dotted terminal will be positive that is the upper side will be positive. So this is how we mark the polarity of the induced voltages. Now generally the circuits uh, could be given in time domain or even it could be given in frequency domain. If the circuit is given in time domain then we have to convert it into frequency domain and you know L1 can be written as J omega L1, L2 can be written as J omega L2, mutual Inductance M can be written as J omega M. The uh, voltage will be written as capital V, V1 actually. And uh, mm, the currents will also be written in form of a capital 1 and capital 2. Now the next step after we have converted into frequency domain is to insert the mutual voltages. So we are inserting the mutual voltages, diamond shape, and their name, this one is J omega I1, this one J omega I2, and polarity we have to make sure that we are marking correctly. So current entering the dotted terminal, so dot that is up will be positive here. Current entering the non-dotted terminal, so non-dot will be positive, that is lower end will be positive. So this is set, and now we can uh, use the KVL to write the two equations. So for this we can write KV equations minus V from here then Z1 J omega L1 into I1 and J omega I2 with the minus sign because of this minus. So this is our KV equation for first loop and similarly we can write the KV equation for the second loop going from here J omega M I1 J omega L2 ZL with I2 and equal to 0. Now let's do an example so our concept becomes more clear. So <coughs> this is the circuit, it's already in frequency domain. Uh, we have to find the current I1 and I2 phasor currents. So as you know straight away we will incorporate the mutual voltage source. So we write the mutual voltage source, the magnitude will be J omega M I1 and I2, here it will be I1, so J omega M 3 I1 and here it will be I2. Now the polarity marking, same current entering, so uh, current entering the dot, so dot positive, that means upper will be positive current entering the non-dot, so non-dot will be positive, that is the lower end will be positive. Okay, and now we can write the equations. 
okay we will equation from here i hope you can follow and write this you can pause the video and see how it has been done so we are getting equation number one from here similarly for this loop we're going from here and writing the equation okay so we have two equations these two equations and we can add two variables so we can easily solve. Uh, let's see how it has been done here. From this equation we calculate I1. This is the value of I1. And we put this value of I1 in equation 1. So for I1 we put this value and solve and solve and solve. You can use your calculator in complex mode to get to from here directly this answer. 2.91 and if you don't know how to do I have a video on this so please watch that video okay so I2 is found now we'll put the value of I2 here to get I1 so putting value of I2 and this equation 3 and solving we get I1 I hope this gives you an understanding how you can solve this type of problem easily so if you think it's useful Please like my channel, subscribe it, tell it to your friends. Thank you.